everyone, and welcome to another edition of Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. A very loaded show for you guys and girls today. We've got the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. I'll be banging on about the umpiring and why it is laughable every single week. Clubs that should be fined for intentionally naming someone an emergency if they were always planning to play. And Geelong are a culprit of doing that regularly. Uh, I'm going to go through the team of the week. Scoops, man, I'm going to review the rounds that's gone and upcoming and go through my Supercoach talk. Another pretty decent round for me. And so many general news that I want to mention throughout the show. But first off, we'll start off with this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Um, it's just you want to be a roast a friend, wish someone happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. If you want to aim for 20 likes for this video, so smash that like button down below there. Go smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button down below there as well. Greatly appreciate. We're over 2,200 subs. Well over now. Greatly appreciate you people that are doing that. If you're watching and you're still not subbed, please jump on the sub button. It costs absolutely nothing. There's paid options if you want to have certain perks. But unlike other people, I don't charge you to watch this, your, your own shows. I don't make you pay to see minority things like player ratings and I don't know, whatever content that people want to use to pay for. I don't make you pay. It is absolutely free because I'm not just do I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this for myself and for you guys, so and girls. So really appreciate you also please go smash that sub button if you haven't already. It costs absolutely nothing to do. So helps me out and it helps you guys out because I get to put more content out there. Greatly Greatly appreciate if you could go smash the like button and subscribe. Now, it's time to go through the AFL ladder after round 14. Look, it's an interesting one. It really, really is. Um, I can pull it up in front of me. If you just give me a second. For some reason, it's not there. So I'm just going to bring it up. Actually, before I... Bring up the ladder, actually. Let's look go through some of the interviews I've done recently. The interview on Friday I did with SNVFLW's young star, Olivia Manfrey. She was great. Um, her SNVFLW side are in contention for the finals at the moment. They're in the top four right now after a win against the Casey Demons. Congratulations. She, she just kicked a lazy two. Um, congratulations to Olivia Manfrey. And also... What I was deeming the biggest interview since Craig McRae, if you haven't seen it, it's dropped on for a Sunday night officially, my exclusive interview with former AFL player agent, the most popular AFL player agent of all time, Ricky Nixon. He discussed why Ross Lyon was shafted by the Saint, uh, by the Blues after he had the job and had to go through the process. There's a little clip partly of that on the channel. So go check it out. It's a minute 35, not much of your time. And then there's a full interview, 35-minute interview with Ricky Nixon. We go through a bunch, a bunch of topics, including the list management in general, where clubs should be, Ross Lyon, a good mate of his, his player agency, some of the plays he managed during his player agency journey, Ben Cousins, Matty Richardson, Nick Rewalt, Tom Hawkins, um, Gary Ablett Sr., Jason Dunstall, Gary Lyon. The list goes on. And on and on, and the interview goes for a while. So go check it out. A lot of people would you would know who Ricky is. So go and check that interview out. Also, I would really, really appreciate it. It costs absolutely nothing, but if you could watch it, I would truly, truly appreciate it. Right now, let's go to that segment. It is time. Oh, it is time for the world famous segment Scoops Goes. Let me just get remove that graphic. You ready? Bang! Oh, the umpiring. Good golly God. How bad is the umpiring these days? Like, seriously, it is beyond. A joke. 
it truly is laughable. I mean, like, it's not just the free kick tallies. It's just constant rubbish umpiring. Like, how many games can they stuff up? You can have moments in games where you stuff up, but they... <sighs> the St Kilda game umpiring was shit. You had Razor Ray and three other umpires, and, and looking at the list of the umpires at the time, all relatively known umpires in terms of games played, uh, games umpired in and everything like that. So to see some poor performances is honestly really, really embarrassing. It's like, how can you be this bad? Like, it, it, is, it is really, really bad. The umpiring is laughable. I mean, I'd show footage, but then again, copyright and all that shit. So, like, when are they going to actually umpire properly? There was two key instances in the saints Richmond game at the end. Now, people in the sales included a lot of freeze. It, last time I checked, it, didn't, it doesn't have to be even. Granted, it was like 13 difference, which is a, a fair bit. I agree. But they gave a lot of weight, a lot of high tackles in the first half for Richmond. So, I mean, that's why it was so high on the differential leaderboard. But as I said, it doesn't have to be even. Nowhere in the rule book does it say it have to be. It has to be even. In the last quarter, Richardson could have got a couple of frees for holding the balls or high tackles or whatever. And then within a second or two later, Richardson players who knew whose free it was intentionally kicked the ball away. No 50s are paid. Up I show some balls and actually pay. I'm sick of players that pretend that they don't know whose free it is when it's a blatant free to one player in the one team. Not a debatable one. You know whose free it is. Be intentionally doing it to chew up time and get your time to flood your defence. Both these 50 metre penalties that should have been given were roughly 50 to 70 metres, 50 to 70 metres out from St Kilda's goal. Maybe 60 to 80 metres out from St Kilda's goal. That's two shots from 20, 30 metres out, and both of them were on the wing. So you know, on a slight angle, we lost by 20. Yes, but at that time, both those times it was like two and eight points. Could have been in front, and then it wouldn't have been 20 points because they wouldn't have kicked two cheapies at the end. And we probably could have won. I say we would have, but we could have. The half running is a joke. Just look at the North Melbourne Bulldogs game as well. Freaky Bulldogs is still a thing. You know, dropping the ball, dropping the ball, dropping the ball. Not paid, not paid, not paid. Bulldogs get a freeze for highs that weren't high. It's just laughable. Bonham Pally throws the ball a couple of times, no free against him. Like, seriously. It, and the Geelong game <laughs> as well. It's just like, seriously, the umpiring is laughable. It is getting worse week after week after week. It's like, when is it going to change? Like, when is it going to change? People wonder why people get pissed off with the umpiring. It's because of rubbish like this, and it really does need to stop. But we know how the AFL works and um, it's it's laughable. It really is. Um, and we just want it to change. So all we are asking for is for it to change. And it's it's not changing and it's Really, really embarrassing. I mean, what can they do to fix it? Drop them! Till they know how to umpire properly, demote them to the VFL or Sample, whatever state those umpires are from, and boot them to those competitions. And then, like any AFL player, if they do bad, they get dropped. Well, majority do, right? They should go to the twos, to pick up their performance. And if they don't perform in there, they don't get back in. People say shortage of umpires, blah, blah, blah. It it really is embarrassing. The umpiring is an absolute joke. It is. There's nothing you can say that says it's not a joke. It really, really is a joke. And people are getting tired of it. And I don't blame people. It is laughable. The dangerous tackle stuff, that's also laughable. It's like, 
when will this stop? <sighs> I don't know when it's going to stop. The buys. Get rid of the bloody buys. No one likes the buys. Get rid of them. Crap. And players will say, oh, we need our rests and that. Oh, I'll take a pay cut then. Why should you get paid for the week? You're not doing anything. Like, seriously. Just think of it that way. You're going to tell people that they need more money. And you need buys. Don't winch when you don't get more money. It's plain and simple. Lift your game. But I know they won't. Now, clubs that should be fine for intentionally naming someone in an emergency if they were always playing, like Geelong do this regularly. Whenever you see Geelong manage a player and they're named an emergency, oh, they're playing. They're either a sub or they're in the 22. And Zach Tui was a prime example. He was managed. Geelong had a late change. Sickler was probably always going to be out. I don't know how much they think of Reece Stanley when he was in emergency. They still didn't bring in Sick for Sickler was out. They still didn't bring in Stanley to spot putting him in emergency. And uh, Jack Burrows, by the way, Geelong, how's that going? That you know, Danger said how highly they rate him. He's been back for three weeks. He only came in as a late change this week as the sub. And prior to that, the week before when he was back, he's in the twos. So yeah, they they value Jack Burrows. You keep telling me that Danger and Geelong that you value Jack Burrows really well. You have been playing when you've had plays out in that position still. So give me a spell, Danger. Geelong, seriously. Yeah, clubs, Geelong in particular, do this a lot. Zach Tui, they've done it with other players in the past. You've seen Segler go in and out every bloody week. It's a late change, whether it's in or out. Stanley's been out sometimes, been a late out. They've just used Blix up as a ruck, who, by the way, got beaten on the weekend by Scott Lysett. That's probably karma for Geelong trying to pull a Swifty and think that it wasn't blatantly obvious what they were doing. Coming to bite them in the ass because the last set was better than Blixar's. And then plus they lost Blixar's out of the back line. So come back to bite Geelong on the, back, on the ass. We'll get to that game, though, later. But all I'm saying is clubs that do these move moves intentionally, thinking it's a great tactic and, and they're one-upping on the opposition, they're not. I could pick it up. I'm sure some of you could pick that up. So I'm sure the clubs, the opposition clubs, are picking up on it. So the pe- clubs that do that. Now, I'd have thought that oh, maybe these clubs like Scott and the Bulldogs do it a little bit. Maybe they're doing it because they want, you know how I remember they both whinged and Hardwick about having to name someone as dropped or managed or omitted and put them in mercy just to put them as sub. This is probably their way of getting back at the AFL that way and trying to make a stand going, we're going to keep doing this until you get rid of it. So, you're not getting your way, Scott, Beveridge, and Harvick when he was there. You got handed a lot of things. You shouldn't be handed another. Another thing that's annoying, and pet, pet peeve. Lift your game. Pathetic. Now, it's time to go through. Um, you know what? I'm going I'm to change things up a little bit here. I'm really going to change it up. Let's go pre, actually, preview. No, let's go through my Supercoach talk. Let's go through the Supercoach talk. Let's go change it up. I scored 1,921, and I'm still in the top 11%. I dropped a little bit in the ranks, and I'm still in the top 11%. Really happy with my team. Really happy. Now, I had a lot of good scores. I took Lockie Neal's, the loop hog at 144. Um, so I was happy with that. A lot of my players did well, except for Jack Zebel. It's a premium. Now, I had two premium, uh, all going well with a full team of premiums in terms of when there's no buys and all that rubbish. I only had two left, Bailey Humphrey and Eddie Ford. Well, as of right now, I've made three trades. I didn't want to do three, and I don't need to, but I'm trying to use the cash. And get rid of the rookies now. Eddie Ford's got the buy, so it was a prime week to do it. Bailey Humphrey still playing this week, so I might do Bailey Humphrey the week after. And this is what I've done. I've made three trades. I'm still going to have 18 available as of, as of right now. Please, Frio, Justin Longmuir, please do not drop Matt Johnson. I only need him for this week, and then next week I can trade him potentially to upgrade Bailey Humphrey. So please, Justin, please leave Matt Johnson in. Otherwise, I'm going to have to undo this and 
probably mix it around again. But in the meantime, I made three trades. Out Alex, Alex Chincotta, Eddie Ford, and Josh Weddle. And in, these will both be plays for the bench when the for when the um, Byrons are over. So in other words, after this week. In, for the Eagles, Ryan Marrick, Osin Mullen for Geelong. Now, I understand he probably won't play. So calm down. If he plays and Johnson plays, that's 19. So just calm down. Don't expect him to play. Just want to get the cheapest guy in the defense that could play some point during the season of all those rookies at that, uh, that price, which pretty much none of them play. So that's why I put Mullen in. Just for the bench, I'm going to have a full defense, premium defense, after this week. So relax. So Mullen, Marrick, in with the returning demon, Clayton Oliver. And if he doesn't play, I'll get someone else. So Clayton Oliver is the man I have brought in. There you go. Oliver, Marrick, Mullen, out, Cincotta or Cincotta, Ford, and Weddle. Um, my back line, all going well, will consist of, in a non-buy round, Jordan Dawson, Jack Sinclair, James Sicily, Nick Dacos, Will Day, and Harry Sheasel. Bench will be Mullen and Constable. The midfield will be Laird, Brayshaw, Neil, Rao, Petrarca, Sarong, Paddy Cripps, and I th- think at the moment it's Errol Goulden. Yes, Errol Goulden. There's a few positional changes. I've been swapping it for mid forward, so. All going well. That's what the thing. Gordon will po- is pushing to the four line at the moment, but I think I'll start changing it, chop and changing. Oh no, that's right. Oh no, Gordon is in the is in the um forwards now. So hang on, let me change that. Let me change that graphic. Hang on a second. I'll put it up there. That's Clayton Oliver is in for now, which is big because it could be a it could be a um good move. Here we go. Let's look at this. Look at that. That's the back line there. All going well, non buys, etc. You got Dawson, Sicily, Sicily, ah, Sinclair, Sicily, Nick Dacos, Will Day, Harry Sheasel, Mullen, Constable on the bench, Laird, Brayshaw, Neil, Raoul, Petrarca, Sarong, Oliver, and Paddy Cripps. The bench at the moment uh, consists of Matty Johnson. Um, I did look at Angus Sheldrick, but I wanted to get cheaper. So that's why I've gone with who I have there. So Johnson. Uh, Drury and Roberts have been flipping around. I think I got Roberts on the midfield bench now. Rux, Wits and Briggs bench is still in Ed Moyle. Then the forwards will be Dunkley, Zeeble, Cornelio, Rosie, Humphrey, and now it is obviously Errol Goulden and Angwin and Roberts are still on the bench. Um, but that might be Roberts now. That'll be Ryan Marrick. On the bench. So, yeah, some interesting moves. What do you guys think? What have you done? Um, so, yeah, that's that's the bench there. I'm going to have to fix that there. All right. So I still left St. Cotter's name on there. Let me change that. All right. So then that will be the midfield bench and the rest of the team all going to plan. Um, with everything without the buys, so that's what I have there. And as I said, as confirmed, there in Clayton Oliver, Ryan Marrick, Osin Mullen, uh, out Alex Chincotta, Eddie Ford, and Josh Weddle. What trades have you done for this week? Any suggestions you want me to comment? Comment down below, um, or message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live, or Facebook, AFL Information, Trade Rumors, and Results. Now it's time to go through my AFL team of the week. Well, it's always debated, and here it is. Scoots is round 14, AFL team of the week. From the back line, the pockets, Sam Doherty and Jake Lloyd. Full back, Callum Wilkie. Half back line, the flankers, Jack Sinclair and Harry Sheasel. Center half back, Aaliyah Aaliyah. Wingman, Dan Houston, and Josh Kelly. Centerman, Josh Dunkley. Half four line, the flank is Zach Bailey and Toby Green. Center half forward, Jeremy Finlayson. Forward pockets, Dan Butler and Cody Waitman. Full forward, Jake Riccardi. 
Ruckman, Scott Lysett, Rovers, Lockie Neal and Steve McNeilio, Interchange, Tim Taranto, Adam Trelaw, Adam Chera and Marcus Bontempelli, Sub, Brad Crouch, Emergencies, Tom Green, Ollie Wines, Caleb Sarong, and Paddy Cripps. Now, some of the reasons for those selections, it's, it's really plain and simple, honestly, because Cal Wilkie, people are going to say, oh, St Kilda, oh, of course you did. Well, no, because he beat Jack Reward. Jack Reward had eight disposals, no no goals, and only had one behind. If you can if you can say that's not a good game, then I don't, I don't know what you're talking about if you say that's not a good game. He was terrific, and uh, he deserved a spot in the team. Uh, Jake Lloyd had 27 disposals at a good efficiency, also deserved a spot in the team team as you can see there um sam doherty 32 disposals deserves as well as well sinclair 30 possessions at 79 percent in the wet is a fantastic effort um and 30 disposals he was great he was part of the reason why the saints were still in it and of all the players on the ground that weren't having great ball skills since it was like he was playing in dry conditions it was that good earlier earlier like 12 marks a lot of intercept possessions and one percenters um, one of the standout key defenders for the week for me is Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron did absolutely nothing. Uh, Harry Sheaves with 32 disposals. I thought he was North Melbourne's best player. Very, very good. And could he feature in the votes? Keep an eye out for that. Uh, the wingers, Dan Houston, 32 odd disposals a goal. Great efficiency. Got some clearances. Uh, it was very good. Josh Dunkley, 28 disposals. Didn't kick goal. It was really impactful for the Lions. Josh Kelly kicked three goals and 32 odd disposals or 34 even. It was terrific. The service spot on the team, self-explanatory there. Um, I mean, they were – how good were the Giants, by the way, over Fremantle? Uh, but we, we digress there. In the half-forward line, we've got Toby Green. I mean, he kicked four goals with 16 disposals. It was pretty um, obvious that he deserved a spot on the team. Zach Bailey kicked two goals with 26 disposals. He also deserved a spot in the team. He was very, very good. Jeremy Finlayson kicked four with 10 disposals. He was also very obvious to select in the end. I mean, there was no one better um, than Toby in the small forward brigade this week. Oh, actually, there's a bit, deba bit debatable there, I suppose. But he was one of, anyway, one of the best players in the round um, was Jeremy Finlayson. We kicked four and ten disposals. Toby Green, two and 26. Bailey, two and 28. Absolutely awesome. Now, Dan Butler kicked three. Um, with 16 disposals. Again, he was a key reason why the Saints still stayed in the contest. It was uh, really, really good. And quite frankly, he really did deserve his spot. It was that good. Every time the Saints looked like they were gone, it wasn't Sinclair. It was Butler. He did very good and deserved a spot in the team. Jake Riccardi, the Riccardi party, he kicked five. He was so good was Jake Riccardi, and he deserved a spot in the team. I mean, it's self-explanatory there as to why he got in. Uh, and Cody Waitman, well, he, he, he did just kick a casual six, so he was always getting into the team. And then the, the Ruckman, he could have chose between a few players, but I went with... Um, Scott Lye said, I feel that maybe Goldson in English, you could say, but they played each other. Um, so I understand why you would say one of those Ruckman, but I felt Scott Lye said was far more damaging compared, to, like his opponent, Blix, obviously beat, whereas Goldstein in English, I thought Goldstein was better, but they were relatively close. So I went, that's why I went Scott Lye said, locking Neil. Well, he was magnificent. 32 odd disposals. Good amount of clearances and contested possessions. 17, I think, contested possessions deserve a spot. Cornelio, despite not getting guided, like 11 marks and tackles, 32 disposals, solid efficiency. Just didn't hit the scoreboard with a goal, Cogs. Got him in super coach, he's done. Well, bench, Tim Tarana kicked a goal in 38, an important goal late, had to get in. Uh, Trelaw, goal in 34, he's really good in, in the boils getting the win. Chera, two goals in 27. Carlton had their first win in six weeks, he did well. Um, and Bond and Pally kicked three with 30 something disposals. The sub is Brad Crouch. Again, his efficiency was like 67%. And in the wet, that's like a 78-ish in the dry conditions, maybe 80. 
and I thought a lot of contested possessions in there, like 13 or 17 contested, but 17 contested, 17 contested possessions, clearances in and under, handball chains out to the runners like Sinclair and Hill and Malira, and he did um really good job to put as the sub. And as the Mercies, they were Tom Green, Ollie Wines, and Caleb Sarong, and Cripps. So I mean, they were the next miss. Now you probably saying there's no defenders and whatnot on that list, but Tom Green had 32 odd disposals, good efficiency, um, solid efficiency. He did okay. He, he was very close to getting in. It's Tom Green, and then as you see there, Ollie Wines as well, 20 disposals, solid amount of clearances, but his efficiency is what kept him out. Callips are wrong. Efficiency, he had 44% of the 10 turnovers, but kicked a goal in 34, which is why he's in the he was in the contention. Paddy Cripps kicked two goals at 27, league's best game for the year, or if not his top two game of the year. So that's my team of the week. Comment down below your thoughts on my team of the week. Uh, let's go review round 14. And it was a very, very interesting round in football. Started on Thursday night at the Adelaide Oval. It was Port Adelaide and Geelong. And it was the Power who got the good win in the end. They had won 110 to 72. They were down at like 18 at half time. The third and fourth quarter, they kicked seven goals in each quarter. The Power, 38 point win. Great win. Geelong is still out of the eight. Are they done? Are they cooked? Is it over for Geelong? Hopefully it is. Um, to be honest, they don't deserve to be in there. Uh, the power were terrific. They're now, now on top of the ladder. I know they've had an extra game in the Pies, and the Pies win against Adelaide. They go straight back. But in the meantime, they're on the top of the ladder. Saints are still fifth. The eighth spot was up for grabs. Carlton, uh, Gold Coast, and Freeman of Blue an opportunity. The Bulldogs won. Essendon. Um, playing again this week, so it'll be an interesting one. See how they go um, against Frio. But in this game alone, Butters was okay. Uh, Wines was good. Finlayson was good. Geelong, there wasn't really any major confusion. Tom Stewart probably played his worst game for a very long time. It was the power by 38 points. Blixars played a poor game for his standards. Lysette beat him in the ruck, which is not a good thing for Blixars when Lysette's been playing twos not too long ago. Uh, but it was the power, good team effort. Quinton Narkles, Sparkle Narkle, as they called him at Geelong. Uh, two goals, 16 disposals in his Port Adelaide debut against his old side. Uh, I thought he had a pretty good performance, to be honest. Friday night at the Gabba, it was Brisbane 97, defeated Geelong. Uh, they will, if they played them. Brisbane 97, defeated the Swans 81, Brisbane by 16 points. It was Neil. It was Dunkley. It was Bailey. That were some key trimmers. Goulden, Warner. Angus Sheldrick, some of the better players for the Swans. Uh, Saturday at Giants Stadium, and what a big spanking this was. The Giants, 106, smashed the Dockers, 36. 70 points. Adam Kingsley will be up and about, and I've been saying this for a while. GWS are the dark horse for the eight. They've had one bad game all season. It was against the Pies at the Gs, like 60 points or something like that. But now they've just been superb. They've had every game they've lost. If there's some margins they lost by 20, they were in it in the last quarter. So go check it. If you don't believe me, go check the goals at the end of a game. Some other teams might pot on late. The Giants have been very good in every game this year, bar the Pies game. And they made a statement. The Stockers are a decent side. They're a side in the eight. The Giants are a dark horse for the eight. I've been saying it for weeks. They are a dark horse for the eight. And they're only a game out and a percentage out. So beware the Giants. The big, big sound from the west of the town is the sound of the mighty Giants. Well, they're banging it on the door of the eight. They're oh so close. And if sides that are just in and around them, like Geelong and uh, Bulldogs and Adelaide lose and Essendon, they all lose and the Giants win. They got the bye this week. But after that, they're really close, the Giants. They need to get more wins in a row, obviously, not lose so many close games because of the way they are on the ladder. But they're oh so close, and uh, the Giants are up and about at the moment, and so they should be. Toby Green, Jake Riccardi, Tom Green, um, all fantastic. Lockie Whitfield. Oh, how did he, how did Lockie Whitfield get a week on that Jordan Clark dangerous tackle? Oh, 
I said about the umpiring in Scoop Chase Bain, it's it's a joke. It really is an absolute joke. It it, it it's laughable. It is really, really laughable. It I just don't know how they keep getting away with it. But the Giants, how good were they? The Talkers were bad. Walters gets a two year extension, kicks a goal in three possessions. Uh I think he should have given it away to be honest. Had a good last three weeks, but I don't know how he still survived. He's too old now and should hang up the boots. Oh, the big game on Saturday night, the G. It was Trent Cotchins, 300th game. Richmond, 90, defeated the Saints, 70. Richmond by 20 points. It's all right. It's all right. We're still fifth. That's what people don't realise. Every time we lose, people say, oh, your season's over, blah, blah, blah. No matter who we lose to, we win a game. It's, oh, they got injuries or it was umpires, blah, 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 blah. I don't care what they think. Those idiots think. But it's disappointing that when we had a four-goal lead in the first quarter and then we're trailing at quarter time for 10 points. That was a concern. In the second quarter, the rain came, drizzle. It was slippery and everything. And we just didn't adjust the conditions well enough. Oh, Jack Sinclair did and Butler, but not many others did. It was disappointing. Then in the last bit, Higgins got a goal late in the game in the last quarter at the start or around that time. Butler did, as you had a great game. I think I got two, two points. And then my mate Filippo went to set a shot from 40 metres out. Didn't happen. Higo had a shot, set shot from about 45 straight in front from a long range in the wet, so maybe even 50. He shanked it. There was opportunities there. Just didn't capitalise. And I felt Richmond did have a bit of a tin ass about them. They would kick the ball out. It would fall off someone's leg and it would just fall in their player's lap. And they, and they marked the ball. When, that, when we kicked forward, they had their loose guys sitting waiting for it. When we had loose guys, they weren't in the right positioning. So that's something Ross should be going on. Like, seeing battle and people like that, they were loose men. And they weren't in the right positions. They were like, right next to the Richmond players, and even then, they didn't really make an impact at all. So that's something Ross needs to address to fix up. In those conditions, couldn't have been playing the way they were, and they should have been attacking, not defensive, when they were down. Just keep going and see what happens. And that's why we got closer in the end. But then again, they were more cleaner in the wet. They were picking the ball up, a few tin asses, sure, but it was disappointing in the end for my Saints. Two games on Sunday, Carlton and Gold Coast. What a spanking this was. Carlton's first win in six weeks. People say, no, they're carrying on. They won first game in six weeks. Gold Coast are a decent side now. Carlton by 59, 120 to 61. Cripps, Chera and Co. were very, very good for them. The Suns, no, Anderson was all right. Uh, Levi Castle started all right. Um, Real was okay, nothing special. So it's disappointing. It really is disappointing. Um... But that's how it happened for the Suns. Now, the final game, North Melbourne and Bulldogs. It was the Bulldogs by 20 points, 20 points. Made that 21, sorry. Uh, 84 to 105. I thought the Roos were always in this. The Bulldogs were in front in the second half a little bit. But the Roos kept coming. And then the Bulldogs got a few 10 ass free kicks. Surprise, surprise. Which resulted in goals. Um, and the Roos got to like 34 points down. And to their credit, they stuck by a few goals in a row. Zerha um, and a few others got some goals. I thought, hello, are they a little chance? Uh, unlikely, but a small chance. And they got it to like 12 points or something, or 18, 18 points. So they were still in it. So that's their credit. They didn't fade away and lose by 50 points. So it was only 21 points. Cody Waitman kicked six. Trelaw was good. Bonapelli was better. Um, the Roos Sheezer was their best player. Plain and simple. Uh, and then there's, that's the teams that had the games this week. And uh, it's now time to go through the Scoops medal reenacted like the great Gillen McLaughlin. <clears throat> Round 14, Quite Adelaide v Geelong. Quite Adelaide, Jay Finlayson, one vote. Port Adelaide, O'Wines, two votes. Port Adelaide, the Houston, three votes. Brisbane v. Sydney. Brisbane, Al Neal, one vote. Brisbane, Zed Bailey, 
two votes. Brisbane, Jay Dunkley, three votes. GWS v Fremantle. GWS, Toby Green, one vote. GWS, Jay Kelly, two votes. GWS, Jay Riccardi, three votes. Richmond v St Kilda. St Kilda. B. Crouch, one vote. St Kilda. J. Sinclair, two votes. Richmond. T. Taranto, three votes. Carlton v. Gold Coast. Carlton. P. Cripps, one vote. Carlton. A. Chera, two votes. Carlton. S. Doherty, three votes. North Melbourne v. Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs. M. Bontempelli, one vote. Western Bulldogs. A. Trelaw, two votes. Western Bulldogs. C. Waitman, three votes. The leaderboard after round 14. In third, and trust me, it is heating up. There's a few guys just below these guys, by the way. In third place on 19 votes, Rory Laird. In second place on 20 votes, Tim Taranto. And in first place on 22 votes, Jack Sinclair. That is the leaderboard of the Scoops medal after round 14. Sinclair. First on 22, Torino second on 20, and Roy Laird on 19. There's a few guys un under that on 18, 17, 16, 15, all the way down to 10 votes. And really, they're all the guys in contention. There's a stack of plays in that conversation. Um, comment your thoughts down below. I'll repeat the three voters in my games. In the three votes in the power game, it was Dan Houston. Three votes in the Brisbane game, it was Josh Dunkley. Three votes in the Giants game, it was Jake Riccardi. Three votes in the Saints game, it was Tim Taranto. Three votes in the Carlton game, it was Sam Doherty. And three votes in the Bulldogs game, it was Cody Waitman. Uh, yeah, that's that. Um, what do you guys think? Scoops me I may do one more round of the votes on this podcast and then have a big bonanza episode of the Scoops Medal yet again. What do you guys think? Comment down below what you reckon. Uh, just a recap there for your own uh, looking at it all. That's what I've done there in the votes. You can see pretty clearly um, the votes I've done there. As I said, Dunkley, Houston, and Co. All pile on votes there. And I'll put the next graphic up for you just right now. In the Giants game, as I said, it was Jake. Riccardi, who got the three votes, and in the Saints game, it was Tim Taranto. Um, and in the and then in the Carlton game, it was Sam Doherty. Um, hang on, there we go. Get it up here. Where is it? There it is. Um, yeah, that's that game. Then obviously the other game. Carlton, uh, sorry, in the North Melbourne game, it was Cody Waitman. We polled the votes there. Waitman, Trelaw, and Marcus Bontempelli. Uh, I don't know why that graphic's not going up, so just give me a second. Put that up there. Um, for the people that do want to know, because they want to they want to see it as official. So official is what you will get. And, um, yeah, and there you go. In the final game, there you go. Cody Waitman, Adam Trelaw, and Marcus Bontempelli. All right. It's now time to go preview round 15. And some teams have the bye. Six teams have the bye again. And thankfully, it is the last week of the stupid bye rounds. Thank God that is over. Uh, but let's go re preview. Around 15 games. And it starts all the way on Thursday night. And it's this is going to be a real interesting one. It's Geelong 
hosting the Demons at GMHVA 720 Thursday night down at GMHVA in Geelong. I've tipped Melbourne, really interesting one, Geelong a 10th, Melbourne a 3rd. Really important game for both. Geelong lose this and they may be slipping out of that final eight contention. Melbourne win, they probably solidify a top four spot for a couple of rounds at least. They lose, they're vulnerable. The Saints and Lions play each other next. So they would need a win, Melbourne, for that case, for the top four. And Geelong need it for a top eight chance. But I'm tipping Melbourne. Clayton Oliver should be back. And so I trained him in my Supercoach team. Um, I'm going for Melbourne here. They beat Geelong in Geelong not too long ago. I think it was two years ago when it was an empty G match or a half empty Geelong ground. Friday night at Marvel Stadium. It's my Saints, 7.50 p.m. at Marvel on Victoria, Victorian time, hosting the Lions. Big game. Saints almost beat Brisbane at Marvel last year in round 23, uh, round 22. So it, it's going to be an interesting one. Need the win. It's a spud for all the game um, to raise awareness about mental health. Um, so if you can get down there, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, the Saints, Dan McKenzie could be back first time in a year through the VFL. Jack Hayes is close. Zach Jones is close. But in the AFL side of things, um, big game. So I think changes need to be made. I think Duke Howard needs to be dropped. But then again, you've got Hipwood and Danaher, who, someone at his height, so they can't really afford to drop him. Zane Cordy could, but I don't prefer Zane Cordy as a defender. I prefer him as a forward, and you're not going to put him in. Sharman was a sub and done okay as a defender. Had 11 intercept possession, one percenters in a quarter in 10 minutes. Really impressive, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I think it'll be the same back line. Tom Heimel could come in in place of Howard. He's a similar height to Wilkie, but if they think of the battle... And Wilkie can do it on Hipwood and Danaher. Maybe that's how they bring out Dougal Howard. Obviously, I'm going to go for my Saints here to get the win over the Brisbane Lions. But it's going to be a toughie. It's going to be a toughie. But hopefully, Jack Gunson and Daniel Rich are still being managed. That would be pretty nice. Um, on Saturday, we have the Swans hosting the Eagles. 4.35 on Saturday, Victorian time. And the SCG, the Swans are going to win really easily. It's plenty similar. Let's just cut the... You know what? And just get right to the next game. Fremantle hosts the Bombers Saturday night, 7.25. 7.25 p.m. Victorian time at Optus Stadium. It's the Dockers hosting the Bombers. Dockers will want to bounce back. Bombers are hoping that St Kilda lose, and then they go into fifth place if the Saints lose and they win. So come on, Dockers. Give them the old heave-ho. You're playing at home. Lift your game. You are bad last week against the Giants. Play good this week and give the Bombers the old heave-ho. In saying that, I, I'm still tipping the Dockers because they're at home. The Bombers are an interesting team. They're hard to get a read on sometimes. They play good against one team, a good team. They play crap against the bottom team. And they're mediocre against the middle-tier teams. So it's an interesting one. But I'm going with the Dockers. Sunday at 1.10, the MCG is the Pies hosting the Crows. The MCG Victorian time, one ten at the G. This is going to be Adelaide's biggest task, not just because it's Collingwood, but you're actually playing away from the Adelaide Oval and you're playing the best team in the competition at their home ground. In Victoria, let's see how you really are, Adelaide. Flat track bullies at home. That's why I never said you were premiership contenders. You're not even top eight contenders, really. You're in that conversation top eight. But you're playing away from home. Get the loss and you're probably out of the eight at the end of the round. It'll be an interesting one, so I'm going for the pies there. And an interesting game at Heritage Bank Stadium in Queensland, up on the Gold Coast. It's the Suns, 4.40 p.m. Victorian time, hosting the Hawks. I'm going for the Suns. They'll bounce back. They need a win. If they lose this, their top eight spot's probably done. They get the win and they're back in that conversation, especially if Adelaide lose and Geelong lose. So, yeah, I'm going for the Suns there. And the teams that have got the bye, Carlton, North Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Richmond, Western Bulldogs, and GWS. So I'll go the Suns by 30-odd points. They should bounce back with a big statement. Okay, my final, final thoughts are this. I mentioned the Lockie Whitfield one-week suspension. It's ridiculous. Gather round. Round four. 2024, Thursday, April 4th to Sunday, 7th of April. That's when Gather Round will be, round four of next year. Um, go check out my Saints, Saints Richmond match day vlog, get my thoughts and some footage of the goals from Trent Cotchin in the round of the game, uh, Jack Higgins and a few others, Max King. Go check it out. I greatly appreciate get some of my reactions and my emotions in the videos. Um, so go check that out if you haven't already. It is in the some of the most recent videos on the channel. So is the interview with SN and VFW young star Olivia Manfrey. So please go check that out if you haven't already. It costs absolutely nothing to go check any of this out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, but mainly on the YouTube channel. Please and thank you. 
subscribe, leave a like on the video. If you're not going to watch the video, leave a like. Smash the sub button as well. Would greatly, 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 greatly appreciate that. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of Kick It The Scoops. I've got more guests lined up. Potentially could have some interviews during this week and some other um, form of video. So keep an eye for that. Nothing's locked in so far. So check some stuff out throughout the week. Um, till the next Monday night at 7 p.m. Have a good one. The most important thing of all to remember is go to the Saints and, of course, and of course acknowledge me, the one. And Roman Reigns in the bloodline and no more. If you watch WWE, you would know. And that was cinematic perfection. They nailed that storyline to perfection, and it's not over just yet. All aboard the Philip Road train. Come on, Saints. Lift your game against the Brisbane Lions. Get the win back at home. Get in that top four and solidify a spot in the eight, or at least get closer to solidifying a spot in the eight. Come on, Saints. Come on. Go, Saints. And acknowledge me, the one.